Bright Sellers paid me to mention them at the end of this video. These are some of the words that I think that you should get acquainted with to hold your own in a conversation over a prefix tasting menu, and I'd like to get the more literal words out of the way first, starting with salty. Salty foods include chips and pretzels, but in order to really get your arms around it, you've got to experience oversalted food a couple of times. While undersalted food leaves you feeling like something is missing, overly salty food makes it just plain inedible. Briny is just salty with its sharp edges eroded by ocean water. Sample the taste of briny by munching on a few capers, olives, or oysters. Herbaceous is just a fancier way of saying herby, as in tasting of herbs like chives, basil, and parsley. A really green falafel might taste especially herbaceous. Other self-descriptive food words include vegetal, tasting of vegetables, take the spice out of a jalapeno and that's what you're left with, and citric. Tasting of citrus, but not necessarily sour, like the orange zest sitting in a bowl of sugar or lime zest flavoring your margarita's rim salt. Nutty means tasting of nuts, but it has potential to throw you for a loop when used to describe certain toasted dairy products like deeply browned butter or a crispy Parmesan frico. Earthy means tasting of earth, and if you're not sure you can pinpoint that description, try a roasted red beet or a shaved white truffle. Two things that taste like they were ripped from the earth and placed in your mouth still coated in humus and compost. Camphorous is a little bit like earthy, but specific to camphor, a terpene that's readily sampled by sniffing on Carmex or sucking on a bay leaf. Tannic is another literal word in that it means tasting of tannins, but you might not be able to identify that quite yet. So to do so, drink a glass of really dark red wine or criminally oversteeped black tea. That kind of astringent feeling that you get in your mouth is caused by tannins, and it's exactly the flavor that I strip out in my video about washing tannins out of cocktails with milk. You might have figured out all these words on your own with context clues, but some of the following are less straightforward. Even though it's liquid, the aforementioned tannic wine might be described as dry to mean the opposite of sweet. Thus begins the conceptual portion of today's lecture. Tangy is kind of like sour and something like a tangerine, excuse me, tangerine, might be both. Think of tangy as sour's weaker cousin, found apparent in a vinaigrette where a sour lemon is downgraded to tangy with the aid of olive oil, or in foods like sumac, or even really mature cheeses, where you might swap out the word for sharp. Cloying is a word used to describe anything painfully sweet, be it a pop ballad or a shot of pure uncut Coca-Cola syrup straight with no chaser. Funky is a word that often gets used to mean this should be gross and it kind of is, but not really. Funky foods like fish sauce are often mixed into something else that tames said funk. When funk goes too far, it might be in the realm of rancid. If you're not sure what rancid tastes like, buy a pack of almonds and let them sit in the cupboard for a year. Almonds are high in fat, and fat is notorious for going rancid over time. If you've ever tried making a month's worth of jerky with well-marbled ribeye instead of super lean top round, I'm willing to bet that you've experienced heartbreaking rancidity in your life. Bite into some deeply burnt toast or even a little bit of burnt garlic and you'll become familiar with the meaning of acrid very quickly. Words like acrid and rancid might be a little offensive depending on who's at the table, so if you feel like being catty without being too offensive, you can just call a dish challenging. It's really just critic talk for bad. At the end of a critic's lexicographical spectrum might lie out, a fancy way of saying classy or artsy. If you go to a fine dining establishment, your focus might not be on leaving totally stuffed. Just as haute couture is a high art expression of fashion that you'd never dare to rely on day to day, haute cuisine is a high concept, albeit impractical way to eat. Unctuous, savory, and umami all kind of mean the same thing too, but they're collectively losing their way as marketing terms in the same way that fast food menus use the word crispy as code for fried. Pork belly is unctuous, gravy is savory, and demi glace is probably the most umami food on earth, whether it's made from kombu and mushrooms or roasted veal bones. The point of this lesson isn't to build rules around which words we should and shouldn't use, but rather to keep you expanding that culinary lexicon and building your own personal vocabulary. When someone produces an artistic expression, whether it's through music, dance, painting, or food, they probably want a better response than, wow, I liked that. And even if you're just cooking for yourself, eating and drinking Drinking is a lot more enjoyable when you can specifically identify which portions of the experience hit the notes that you're aiming for. Mmm, tastes rich. I'll see you in the post roll. 
Bright Cellars is a wine club for beginners. When I buy wine, I like to go into a physical store and ask the experts to pick something based on ridiculous adjectives like muddy and dank just to see what they come up with. For people who don't wanna go into a physical store, don't wanna talk to strangers, and don't even know how to begin describing wines, there's Bright Cellars. You can take a short quiz online and get a variety of bottles shipped to your house, place of business, place of worship, or any place that you receive mail. Each box comes with educational information for noobs like serving temperature tips, pairing suggestions, and tasting notes. If you don't like a bottle, they'll send a replacement in your next box. They sent me six bottles, and I've been enjoying a glass every night like a true quarantine king. If you want six bottles, there is a link in my video's description that gets you 50% off your first box. If you've always been interested in wine but never really knew where to begin, go ahead, take that quiz, and get started using all the words that you just learned on half-off wine. <laughs>